guys, it's Lisa, and we're back with another episode of Nashville on the Rocks. This week, we're talking with one of Nashville's most dynamic of musical duos, one half an accomplished guitarist, songwriter, and producer extraordinaire, and the other a carefree, fearless vocalist, both with the relentless drive to create something unique and heavy in the Nashville music scene. Gifted in technique and style, here they are, our friends Blake and Inga from the band Lola Montez. All right. Hey, guys. Oh, my God. I'm so excited to have you in the studio right now. Uh, This is a very, very special episode for us because this is our seventh episode. And you guys, uh, we are so excited to have you in here. We've known both of you for a long time. And um, Dan has just talked about getting you when we first started this podcast. We had a list of people that we really wanted to get on it. And it was always having Inga and Blake on. Like, we just appreciate you guys so much. And we really appreciate the fact that you guys, like, in a town as awesome as Nashville is, like, and everybody does original music around here, but there's still quite a bit of covers that people do. And not to give too much away, you know, um, we still have a lot of, to get into the podcast, to get into the rest of the episode, but you guys are totally about original music. And you have been for a long time now like the past several years so i really dig that that's really important to me that's one of the best things i think about that there is in nashville you know what i mean like the caliber of musicians the awesomeness of going to see shows um you know songwriting the artistic levels you know for songwriting even if people are writing songs for you know artists or other bands but just the originality i think without that you lose everything so i am so grateful to have you guys on the show like it means so much to us so we can just dive in and talk about all the good things well we're excited to be here Mm -hmm. yeah absolutely (laughs) so um y'all ready for my first question okay yeah yeah. okay all right (laughs) so um i have to ask everybody this because it really kind of gives me like a starting point in my mind um to break down but what was your first rock album Oh. Do y'all remember like the first yeah. one that you bought or was <sighs> given to you as a gift or whatever? It was, uh, <laughs> I don't even know, but I know it wasn't an album. It was, <laughs> it was like a cassette or something. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> <Same thing. laughs> we uh, talked about that see. on past <laughs> shows that like, oh, now. I know what it was. I yeah. know what it was. What was it? It was 19. 19- Dang it. What is the, uh, the club in, in New York city? The, Fifty four? Uh, yes, club. club. It was a uh, Studio Fifty Four. Studio Fifty Four. An album huh? <laughs> from my grandmother. <laughs> <laughs> That's adorable. Oh, I was very small. Oh, I was yeah. like I so rock and four. roll. Oh, really? Yeah. And she was like, "Here you go, small child. Have this gift." Yep. <laughs> oh, that's cute. Do you remember who was on it? Oh yeah. Um, well, I, I'd, ha- I'd have to look at it. It was nineteen seventy eight. <laughs> You're like, so, it was a while. Uh, it a was the year music. that it was whatever was on that year. And oh, it, it was just fun. one of those songs, though. I always sing it, too. Oh, that's awesome, though. We'll then have I to look it up. I finally saw the video for it, like, I don't know how many years ago, but I was like, yes. <laughs> so. You're like bringing back memories. <laughs> Sounds like you had a pretty cool grandma. What about you, Blake? Uh, Magical Mystery Tour, Beatles. Oh, okay. Yeah. So yep. did you buy that yourself or did you ask for was it? Was it a present from Santa? I, I think my whole family was like, uh, it was just actually, I think it was me and my dad actually. Um, Magical Mystery Tour? Who was that? The Beatles. Oh. Yeah. Mm. Do not judge me. Oh, well, with the no, Studio 54? They were pretty No, big. not about that, about not knowing the Beatles. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> so the only, the only, I tell this, I tell this story, like, I feel like I find myself telling the story more than I ever have before, but, mm-hmm. like, I had to find my own music because I was listening to the Spice Girls and Backstreet Boys when I was, like, in middle school and an early tween. Like, I didn't know anything about anything. My dad didn't listen to anything past 1950s rock and roll. Yeah. And Neil Diamond. And... Kenny Rogers and that was it and my mom only listened to Air Supply and 80s Yacht Rock like soft rock <laughs> that's all she fucking listened to okay so what was your first rock show that you went to rock I 
Well, mm, that wasn't really rock, I guess. I don't know. It's, great it's all dead. rock. Grateful Dead. Well, that's, that's rock. So that was, still sounds pretty no, cool. I don't know if that was my. First that was your first. Day. Grateful Dead. Probably. Wow. I was four years 11. old. Eleven. <laughs> that's pretty. You were eleven. Cool. Eleven year old. And at, it was uh, Grateful scary. Dead. Scary. Really. And I don't think I probably wanted to go back to any concert after. Did that. Did you go with your grandma too? No. <laughs> no. <laughs> no. My stepfather would, was following them around everywhere and like for it's different years. Different kind of vibe. His Studio Fifty Four oh, yeah. Dead Show. You know. <laughs> I mean, I think his cocaine light. ones. You know, yeah. Psychedelics and. Yeah, they were. They were messed up. What and they year were dancing was this? And, if you don't mind me asking, I don't know. How old were you? Did you, did you Eleven. Say? So it was maybe in the eighties. Was Jerry Garcia uh, there? Was he alive? <laughs> I guess. <laughs> I, <laughs> is there a big man with a beard? Like I was just scared the whole <laughs> the time. I was like, oh, I'm gonna oh die. God. Oh my god, was it intense? Yeah. Seeing a bunch of adults, you know, out of their kind minds, of being so free. Yeah, right. That's yeah, kind of something good. you don't yeah. see I'm not as a kid. Let them not see this show and. Man, this, uh, that would be <laughs> wild going to a first mm-hmm. one. What about you, Blake? I think the first, this is kind of bizarre. <laughs> I've thought about this before, and I, the, the earliest one I could remember was actually seeing a Trans-Siberian Orchestra with my family. Oh. I mean, it's not very rock and roll, but well. I can't actually, I, in, after that, I started going to shows on my own. Um, like the next day, and I can't, I can't remember <laughs> what the first one was. Like, I know, like, it. I would, I would take, you know, I would travel, like, just take a bus to, like, uh, from Hartford to Boston to see the Cult. Uh, oh, would, you know, I cool band stuff yeah. like that. You know, we went to see Super Tramp with Jackson Brown. Mm, okay. And then that was one of the early ones. Then the boss, of course, because we yeah. lived in Jersey and he was also in love with Bruce Springsteen. And then we started doing stuff like Van Halen. Oh, a lot of Madison Square stuff. Wow, okay. So yeah. that's where the, the uh, Grateful Dead was. It was Madison Square. So oh, my <laughs> or, God. Or was it the Meadowlands? I don't actually don't remember. Um, it could have been anywhere. could have been either one well, of those it was places. one of those two for sure. Um, but... <laughs> Uh, gosh, then it was Van Halen and uh, Duran Duran. Mm-hmm. That's where it started getting a little bit more. Uh, <laughs> like, okay, actually, I'm like this. <laughs> so before I that, like, you're, I'm like, huh? Before that, you're kind of just like getting dragged around to a few yeah. shows. I was like, oh, I mean, I'm sorry, but you know, it was uh, good. But you know, when you go see Bruce Springsteen, it is long. Yeah, and he I'm like, a really long are we time. done? Mm-hmm. Are we done yet? I'm like, <laughs> one, more <laughs> one more time. <laughs> Who were your strong musical influences like growing up? Did you have like um, family members that you, it sounds like your stepdad you went to shows with, like your grandma gave you a, an yeah. album like well that was People I don't know what snorting wow. cocaine too <laughs> in clubs no I don't even know where that, that I don't even know why she got that because that is solely not my grandmother I'm not sure no but that's cute maybe though. it was my mom saying oh you should get them this I don't know right <laughs> uh, I could see that happening mm-hmm. but no it's kind of like you actually kind of mm-hmm. like you know gotta find your way mm-hmm. and so you're, did your fa- anyone play musical instruments in your family no. No? No, it's funny. pretty awful. <laughs> <laughs> that was awful. That was awful. <laughs> Don't want to do that again. You know? No, I know my mom actually did play when she was a kid, but then we didn't have like a piano mm-hmm. until later. Yeah. And then yeah. I bought her a piano like later, again, later in life, and she was like... Just and then she just started playing again. Oh, that's cute. Like, yeah, so that was that no. was nice. That's cute. What about I you? I actually Blake? wanted it there so I, we could all play. Oh, yeah. so do you play <laughs> piano too? Oh no, I'm I'm, I'm, I'm total crap. <laughs> total crap. <laughs> You're like no, it's not total, the same level. Well, I just you know no. <laughs> I'm gonna say no on that one. <laughs> what about you, Blake? Um, no, yeah, my. I think my mom played a little bit of everything. Mm-hmm. My sister was kind of the musical uh, force in okay. the family, but uh, um, it was my mom had this old. Uh, I started playing guitar with her. It was like a children's guitar, acoustic guitar from the '70s that had all this like hippie insignia all over it that her boyfriend had got her at a tag sale or something. 
and the action on this like the strings were like way off the fretboard and it was like <laughs> really awful to play and i kind of even knew it back then but that's what i started with playing Beatles songs on that guitar he'd bleed wow. his fingers yeah, bled. with wow. that guitar and uh you still got that guitar you know it's in connecticut Good. and uh yeah <laughs> I know, that's where it belongs still got man. my first one too man it's you, it's really can, it's it's nice looking. When I look at it, I'm like, yeah, that hurts to play, but it's it looks nice, you know. Yeah. Do you have your first guitar in this house? Um, did I bring it home? I went to my dad's that he just passed, you know, not too too long ago, and I grabbed a bunch of stuff. Did I grab it? I can't remember. I don't know. It's probably waiting for me downstairs in the basement over there in Rochester. But uh, oh, okay. I'm gonna, I definitely saved it to bring it if I didn't already bring it back. Gotcha. Okay, yeah. I'm just wondering because uh, you have like 12 guitars, so I was like, why have I never seen <laughs> this one? You know, uh, we got to I've seen I've seen the rest of them. Uh, no, yeah. well, Dan's family came from. Sorry, I don't mean to tell your story, babe, but his family was like pretty musical, like on his mom's side, mm. and like no one played anything. Like I mean, outside of like band instruments, you know what I mean? Like I mm. played the world's smallest cello that you ever saw because I was a really small kid, so I played it small cello they had to like bring it called violins babe they it was basically like a giant (laughs) viola like i had they had to bring it over from another like county like for me and then i (laughs) i don't know why (laughs) (laughs) we're bringing it in (laughs) all right where's that shot let me take a shot here I'll never forget my cousin's friend. I'm pouring myself. (laughs) Changing lives. My cousin's friend. He was in college and uh, he was play. He was like a musician in college and he took my my cello and put it up here and was like playing. Do the cello flex. Yeah, and then I played uh, six years of really bad flute. So you know. It's that. tough. To flute is tough. Though. It's a tough one. Yeah. yeah. So many. Oh, this is good. Yeah. The, the vanilla vodka. That's yeah. very good. Oh, oh my gosh. Notes of caramel. Yes. I, I think that it, I think it would be really <laughs> lovely, like chilled. But oh, I didn't absolutely. get that far. I didn't get that far. <laughs> I was like, this is very nice. So, but yeah. So that's what I played. So I'm always really kind of envious when I hear that people mm-hmm. grew up with that because I'm like that's experience. <laughs> you know what cool I'm experience. envious of Lisa? <laughs> what? People who don't have any of that and they like started like you know like when they were like you know in 19 or whatever and then they just like are great and you know <laughs> either way you're like <laughs> oh you got nothing and here you are just killing it. I'm like it. the <laughs> slowest learner ever so I had a guitar in high school. Okay. But maybe it was that it was just my teacher was I don't know trying to teach me Led Zeppelin and I was like I'm just don't oh well the fact that they tried to teach you Led Zeppelin's awesome I can still play just only that like and I'm like no I'm kidding I'm kidding but uh then uh, when I turned 28 I actually got an acoustic so I was like you know and I'm still just getting off the ground with it you know it's like I I just like to write but I would just find myself singing and I was like all right I'm gonna write this song without you (laughs) <laughs> put the guitar down and write the song because I, I guess it's so getting in the way you know? it is it was yeah. getting in my way <laughs> why is this yeah. really... poor guitar yeah, yeah. Uh, he's like that guitar is great they're like I I'm just trying to bring you joy that's it <laughs> oh my god okay so popping into this <laughs> did you get into singing first and oh, then playing guitar oh I've been guitar? singing since I was like just forever ah! since you that's could talk I, <laughs> That's when I, I I was born. I was like, ma. <laughs> Seeing operas. I could, to- I could totally see that with you, though. I could totally see that as being something that you, like, from the moment you just, like, find your own. Because I think, like, you can sing. Like, if people just get into singing, I don't know. This isn't a very, like, I've got no, like, basis for saying this. But I just think that, like, even if you don't come from a musical family, like, if you're just a singer, you're just a singer. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, no one has to play well, I just, an instrument. I would I would write songs mm-hmm. when I was like two or three, and Aww. and then I'd, of course I was always dancing too because <laughs> you were a song about Because I'm the a color. happy person. I just dancing and singing like I'm in the yep. in the fields. So you've been singing forever, and then kind of guitar came later. 
yeah into doing that okay well what about you blake did you start out with it's, guitar uh yeah i started yeah band instruments you know okay. violin saxophone and that he and plays started, everything okay no, you start out with the cooler no. stuff violin and he saxophone doesn't play the harmonica or I, do you uh no i'm not huge on harmonica just what does that fan. mean i'm not like big on it it's okay. not my favorite instrument mm-hmm. it takes a lot of endurance Mm-hmm. I, th- I would well, think. Also, I'm, I just don't I like the be, sound I'm of it. I'm just scared to inhale old flaky stuff inside. <laughs> I, that is like my biggest fear. <laughs> I know exactly what you're talking about because oh. they, they all got oh. that weird smell. Because you know, sometimes you have to inhale too. So yeah. if somebody's like giving you their harmonica, <laughs> you know. No, you got to keep your own harmonica. My God, that's too much. <laughs> Ooh, yeah. <laughs> Even if it's, it's like wearing it's somebody home. else's socks. You know? it's like, you know, Look, I mean, I'm sure there's, I'm sure there's <laughs> yeah. a protocol on how to clean it, but I, I yeah, mm. but the, there is a protocol on how to clean flute. It's still, it's messy. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so like that being said, so violin, saxophone. Yeah. Did you start playing guitar I, in high school? Um, I was like 11 or 12, and the reason I did it was because um, it was girls, wasn't it? It's always girls. I w- <laughs> I have, <laughs> I've, I've said that in the past, but I, I, in retrospect, I actually, I, I don't think I. I like, cut in on me drinking. I, uh, <laughs> I, I, I had to. <sighs> I wanted to be a beetle. I think. Oh. Um, that was the main thing. Yeah. So cute. That is adorable. Okay. Um, I don't know. I think that's adorable. Essentially, I think that's pretty badass. Yeah. But it's like, I mean, not like I knew like if, like I. I I started playing guitar not for even guitar's sake, just because it just it looked like really cool to be in a band. Mm-hmm. Is why I did it. And the uh, Beatles. Hmm. Yeah, and then like they looked really cool on TV because you know they were live, you know, mm-hmm. obviously. So uh, being sarcastic. Um, <laughs> so because um, people can't tell. So yeah, <laughs> people can't tell. Yeah. No, I I think that that's okay. So that is actually I forgot to say it's going back to this. That is how I learned about the Beatles because my seventh grade music teacher, Mr. De Caesar, made us do a whole semester on the Beatles music. Wow, <laughs> smart guy. It, it actually turned me off from the Beatles for oh, years shit. because it was just it wasn't too your, much. Well, maybe it wasn't your idea. Yeah, do you know what I mean? Like, because yes. that's why I was like all these albums that were sitting. In my house, yep. I did listen to the Supremes mm-hmm. like all the time, but there was that Beatles album, and I was like, "I right, fine, I'll listen." And I did, I did yep. end up liking it. I liked but, a lot of oldies music too. That's mm-hmm. what I would listen to the radio, the oldies station. Mm-hmm. But as far as bands went, it, I just thought the Beatles were cooler. Just yeah. I don't know the way they looked. Yeah, which now by today's standards looks very you know dated and rigid and you know, but. Some people have brought it back. Yeah, this is Nashville. I feel like yeah. a lot of people bring that back. Or at yeah. least they try yeah. to. Yeah, the guitar kind of hiked up a little bit. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So why Nashville? Well, I had a job offer slip through in <laughs> New York City, so I just was like, All right, just let's go to Nashville. Oh, my God. Um. So. Okay. So when did you move here? You've been here that for a while. That could have changed my entire life. I, I wouldn't have done any of this stuff. Um, yeah, absolutely. When did I move here? 98. Okay, so you've been here since 98. So yep. then did you get involved with singing right away? or Actually, I already had uh, projects kind of getting started um, okay. with a, a friend. It wasn't actually really my friend, but it doesn't matter. And <laughs> <laughs> he was my friend afterwards, but uh, <laughs> Right, but not first, like you didn't no, know. No, it was just a friend of my boyfriend's at the time. Okay. So. That's awesome. Okay. So, Blake, how did you end up to, in Nashville? You, obviously, did you come here to play guitar, to play music, to be in a band? Yeah, I feel Was that important to you music wise? Sounds like being in a band was really important to you. Yeah. I mean, before I came here, I had um, a few different bands, played in a couple different projects, and definitely lived some life before I ended up here. Mm-hmm. So, when I moved here, I, I knew some people who were already living here. Yeah. And it was like the one place I hadn't been to yet. So I kind of, it was easy to make that decision, but I definitely came in just looking to just get hired as a guitar player. Awesome. Didn't, I didn't have an, you know, I, uh, I just 
wasn't really worried about being in a band or not. I mm-hmm. just wanted uh, to just improve my life, basically, as okay. a musician, you know. Sure. And when did you move here? 2016. Oh, wow. So, That's yeah. a lot sooner than I thought. Um, Dang. Yeah, more recent? Yeah. You mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. So were you in Connecticut? I was in Connecticut. I lived uh, in L.A. for a little bit. That's where I learned to record. Okay. And then I lived in Pittsburgh for a little bit with some guys I knew um, in a band from L.A. And then, uh, oh, sweet. then I moved back um, to Connecticut, and I would also then commute to Rhode Island for another band I had there. Um, oh, actually, no, I moved back, had a band, and then after that, I had another band <laughs> <laughs> doing acoustic duo stuff as well throughout. Just a lot of just music, 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 recording, mixing, yeah, and playing as a guitar player. But um, Connecticut doesn't really have the infrastructure of music and music industry events that yeah, Nashville t- does. So totally, yeah. Nashville's like the pinnacle of what people want to come to. Just you know, mm. I know a lot of people that go to LA, and I feel like I feel like maybe maybe i don't know enough about this but from what it appears to me it's two different types of people that you either go to la or you go to nashville you know and i feel like the people that go to la like it has just in from what i've seen at least it's just a different type of like person you know versus Mm -hmm. the people that come to nashville and i don't think that there's there's a difference like in terms of like skill or whatever i think it's just about what people want you know because yeah. i know there's well, like now they're lot. coming here yeah so and that's true that's and i think that's been happening for a little bit now you oh, know well, yeah well i think it's harder a little bit but there could be a challenge in la just because it's spread out so much mm-hmm. so in terms of meeting people like distance wise you're saying exactly yeah okay. ge- geographically to where f- where you get to form those relationships just takes longer because you know you can't really be in the mix with people if you're just not seeing them as often you know and mm-hmm. Nashville kind of makes it easy yep. to do that you know you're just crashing into each other all the time well that's what we talk about is the fact that Nashville is just like a small big city the whole like vibe and culture and I've always said Dan and I have always talked about this that like people mold to Nashville not the other way around and I think that's mm-hmm. something to be said because it's just got a good vibe here. Yep. Yeah. So, you it's know, social. I mean, yeah, there's a lot yes. of people well, here. So it's like, it's, it really is a social game. Like mm-hmm. you said, the, the, the other thing is, I think we're all coming from so many different places, but we come here and everybody's like, oh, it's so nice here. People are mm-hmm. so nice. I'm like, well, it's not the Southern nice. It's the come, everyone's come together and now we just respect each other and we're nice. And yeah. We, you're all in this big boat mm-hmm. together, just yeah. as musicians. Yeah. And here, because of the community, you kind of feel like you belong here, and it just feels better. As sure. opposed to, you know, you could be somewhere else in the United States, and it just feels like, you know, like mm-hmm. you're the weird one because you're, you know, pursuing, Music. you know, a career in the arts. Yeah, I know. Yeah. And they were so. like, and they're like, what is wrong with you? This is not where you go for that. Which is like, how know? could you do that? Like, why are you doing that to yourself? Like, who would do that? <laughs> don't you want to make money? Do, don't you want a nice car? You know, it's just like. <laughs> No, no, I've. Don't you want a family? You know, we, like, we've said that before too. Is that like coming here? Like the infrastructure is built for musicians. Like this is Music City, yeah. so it's like if you are working a regular day job and you need off from work for a gig, people are receptive to that because everybody's tied into music some yeah. way. There's no like. Mm-hmm. You don't need to be doing that. You can't that. take off. That's you can't weird. take off. That's You're fired. <laughs> what? <laughs> that's <weird>. <laughs> 100%. <laughs> so I think that's really important to be said. Mm. So it does feel like a really cool culture for that. So, okay. So moving. You're like, to- yeah, fire me. I got another job right I next door. Right <laughs> I'm just doing the same thing. <laughs> and they don't have a problem with it. But, um, okay. So moving to Nashville. So how did, was it a, what kind of an impact how did it change you in comparison to where you came from? Like, did you notice, hmm. did you feel different? I mean, and this is going to be interesting because you guys are coming almost, almost like two decades apart. Yeah, all right. So like the Nashville that you came to Inga is a hundred percent different than the Nashville that Blake right. came to. Right, I think to. Uh, Nashville grew around me. Mm-hmm. Multi- <laughs> <laughs> I, would, I, was like, I would support that. They saw me and they're like, okay. <laughs> they're well, like, she's kind of like Nashville. acclimate to her a little bit. <laughs> Freedom! <laughs> there might be some truth Oh my this. gosh. I, I lived on um, First Avenue North. Oh, wow. So you lived downtown. 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 And I would walk down the streets and like go to the little bars down there 
Uh, you mean and on Broadway? Yeah. Wow. The I call them little Broadway. bars because <laughs> no one was around. <laughs> it was now it's like ridiculous, and we don't we don't dare go downtown. So what about you, Blake? Coming here, like what was a? Oh. So you're into the music. You're into recording. You've got a different band, and I mean. He should tell his story yeah. of when he moved here. Yeah, well, okay. it, it definitely affirmed my my f- feeling that that the whole thing was social and mm-hmm. about relationships. Because for years before that, you know, like I I would do everything I could to network and meet new people in a scene, whether it was in uh, Connecticut or Rhode Island, even in Pittsburgh, where I didn't I didn't I couldn't really get myself around like mm-hmm. with I, I would take the bus there and stuff but it was it was hard to kind of network mm-hmm. outside of the uh, circle that I was in um, but that's actually what I even did here in Nashville mm-hmm. um, and that's I mean it was literally like uh, I, I came down here and lived in uh, my friend Charlie's basement for for a little bit and uh, I would just wake up because I didn't know it was like because I, I would walk out the back of, the, of his cellar up into his backyard because mm-hmm. I would see the would, I knew it was morning because you'd see the light you know coming through the cracks in the door and I would just <laughs> literally walk and I could I could just walk down uh, he lived on Shelby Avenue and I would walk oh, yeah. right over the pedestrian bridge and just start talking to people and in fact um, man I logged like 24 miles on foot one day wow my, yeah, yeah I would just walk around I like this story I'm like <laughs> Yeah, it was, like it's kind of wild, but honestly, I could have been, you know, like, I could have been better. Eventually, I was just like, okay, I need to make something happen. So, mm-hmm. like, I remember, like, walking past these dudes on Broadway who were just, who just had guitars slung on their backs, and they were just on a smoke break because they were just playing around or whatever. Like, hey, man, I'm a guitar. I'm like, blah, 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 blah. you know, like, oh, help me, you know, basically. And so they were really cool, you know. Yeah. I was like, damn, I'm gonna, have, I'm gonna have to ask for help. So I did that, and that's what. And then they just helped me, and they were like, yeah, you know, go to you know the open mic at 2 p.m. at Tootsie's on whatever day it was. And so that's what I did. And m- m- many times, all I had was just one thing that I was gonna do next, and that was gonna be the big thing. All I could think about was that that one event that they told me about, or this place that I should go. Like, and yeah. it, it, it was like it was like every like you know step it was like a leap of faith i didn't know what was next but i had to okay cool a clue you know so i'll go there yeah you know you know and and uh and i would try to meet people you know and uh sometimes it it just it was a miss you know or it was Mm -hmm. just a disaster or whatever you know the people there sucked you know like okay you know like but i mean just sure enough like right around the corner there was something else to do i was like okay now i'm gonna go here you know Mm -hmm. and eventually that's you know like i mean it, I mean, it's 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 funny, but like, I mean, I remember asking those guys. Went to Tootsie's, you know. Okay, you know, whatever, you know. Ended up, uh, um, somebody told me about like, oh yeah, that guy thought I was, you know, the doorman thought I was, you know, an okay person, you know. So he's like, mm-hmm. here, let's go across the street to Rippies or whatever. So we went on the third floor, and uh, whoever that chick was from The Voice, Morgan, whatever. <laughs> Like she was, she was doing a set and stuff, and the dude didn't want to play guitar at all, you know, like because he was just he just wanted to drink. Oh. So I took his guitar and we played the Joker by uh, Steve Miller, and so I did. That was like that was my Broadway debut. He's playing with her. Oh, well, she, she was just on The Voice. Yeah, yeah, they, I know exactly who she is. She's played at Acme a couple of times, and she's fantastic. A great singer. Yeah, I mean, it, it was neat. I mean, it didn't yeah. it didn't really matter. I mean, I could just walk in and stuff like that. And just, well, that, well, it's so weird. It's just, look at all those, look at mm-hmm. how that just happened. That's yeah. like a true Nashville story. Well, t- well, totally. I mean, that, and, but then mm-hmm. I, I mean, I could, I could, rem- I remember the whole sequence of events because then like, you know, we left that and we go out, hang out with the, the, the door guys from Tootsie's friend. And so we're all there and we're like talking about stuff and I'm just bored because they're playing darts and I hate darts. And <laughs> so they're talking about, like, oh, Kenny Olsen, Kenny Olsen. I'm like, okay, Kenny Olsen, Soul Shine. Okay. Kenny Olsen. Dude and played in Kid Rock's band. Yep. He's hosting an open mic at Soul Shine. So I'm going to go there you know and do that you know for three weeks I just never even got to play just because I don't know it's just the way it goes <laughs> just <laughs> sometimes show up and- I just show up you know and just like talk to people and stuff anyways but eventually you know um from there I think I met uh Bev that was that was the first time I met Bev Bev Miskis no uh, uh no our friend our, our friend Beverly um okay and and uh I had also seen Louie play there before, mm-hmm. Louie and, and uh, back when it was called Jaggered Edge. But uh, um, yeah, I met Louie. I didn't meet Louie Lee there. I just knew of him because um, 
I would also go to some of the honky tonks and I would go see, I would go to the wheel back when it was the wheel and I would see, uh, you know, fish on and, uh, 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 R- Richie Shoal. Like it mm-hmm. just, they, cause it was the only a place that was doing rock. So I would just hang yeah. out there and stuff and just chill. And, uh, eventually, uh, yeah, the dude from the Zeppelin tribute band was like, yeah, Mark, he was just like, yeah, you know, uh, these guys here, the dudes in the freewheelers at the time, you know, they were called the freewheelers, you know, they're playing the five spot Sunday. So I went there, you know, saw those guys play, officially met Louie. Louie's like, yeah, you should check out this op- other open mic Kenny's doing in, in uh, Cool Springs. Mm-hmm. So I go to Cool Springs, you know, yeah. and do that. And that was a really, that was a fun time doing open mics, you know. And, uh, when you were doing open mics, did you, were you playing with anybody or were you singing? Yeah, no, uh, the more like blues jams. Okay, cool. So I was just doing the guitar thing and, uh, and, uh, yeah. And then, uh, and eventually, yeah, leaving, I remember leaving that one in cool Springs, Be- Beverly, our friend was mm-hmm. like, yeah, she was talking about this woman, uh, this chick named Inga, you know, she's like, yeah, you got to name Inga. And, you know, cause Bev had a very, she had a very Tennessee accent and, uh, oh, yeah. she would speak very quickly. And I was just like, what she's talking about Inga and a drummer from skinny Molly, who was our drummer, Kurt at the time. And, uh, uh, at, well, at the time, like I didn't, I didn't know that he was playing in a band called skinny Molly at the time. And then, and Inga, but I, I wasn't exactly sure what she was saying, but I knew that the, both of them were forming an original project. They were trying to do something original, and I really wanted to get in on that because that's my bread and butter is band stuff. Sure. And so, uh, yeah, eventually, you know, uh, you know, I started seeing Inga around the residency, and and uh, yeah, the rock and roll residency that mm-hmm. was that was huge. That was yeah. like my first, probably my first real big experience here with like meeting a bunch of rock musicians <laughs> yeah. and seeing everybody. Yeah. It's the first time I met you. Yep. Yep. Yes, indeed. That's awesome. <laughs> okay. So you're around the residency. Yeah. And-, and then, you know, we met Kurt and, you know, kind of Beverly kind of put, put it on in, in, you know, high gear for me, basically. Me sure. and those guys. So then once I got into the original band thing, it was just only a matter of time before all my, you know, hired gigs sort of dried up and I just wasn't, I just couldn't really devote my self to enough of a volume of like hired work to really just do an original. So, you sure. know, so it's just, but you know, I made it work and it's cool and I, and I love doing band stuff. So I'll never, you know, yeah, I'll never be, Oh, that was a bad idea. You know, it's just sure. like anything else. I, I, I jump right in. So, so that's, so when you, when you guys met, what year was that? 2016. Mm-hmm. Yeah, 2016. It, 2016. It was only a couple of months after you got here. Okay. And so did you pick up really, is that how Lola Monta, um, Montez. 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 <laughs> say montage. I was like, that's not. We're going to need a montage. Well, actually, that's our next name. <laughs> We're changing it to Lola Montage. <laughs> so is that how Lola Montez formed? Yes. yes. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yep. yep. All right. So, so that's you got awesome. it in without even asking. Yep. I'm yeah. like, that's kind of neat. So how that got brought together. It, yeah. yeah. And that was the whole thing. So moving to Nashville totally affirmed to me the the value of forming relationships with people yeah. and how cool Nashville was that geographically it was small, but it was so uh, condensed with people, you mm-hmm. know, musicians and stuff who had the same goals. So absolutely, I was like, yeah, that's a win. Good, good call on that. You know? <laughs> You're like, absolutely. Yeah. So, and that's, and that's the thing. So that kind of led you all to each other. And then, so did you start writing music pretty much yes. shortly yeah. after that? Yeah. That's awesome. And how, and no how way. does that work? Like, um, <laughs> if you don't mind me asking, cause y'all have been together pretty much since you met. Does that no. sound about right? No. So you were like playing music. Yeah. We were first. bandmates before you were bandmates you know, we were together. You Maybe know? I just year. thought you guys were together forever. No, okay. it, being bandmates predates our relationship. That's adorable. So, mm, <laughs> That's yeah. really adorable. How did this end up? How did this work? We Maybe we can cut this out, but I need to know how this works. Or how did it come to fruition? Oh. Well, there, uh. well, well then, then I must, I must oh, preclude I, this I by saying that uh, when, Bev, when Beverly was originally talking to me mm-hmm. about Inga, um, I didn't really understand what she was saying, but for some reason in in my brain like i be it, it i just began to like put um two and two together because like years before like it was probably around 2010 or 2011 i actually found Inga's band um right, on I've facebook only been in, i've only been in two bands 
I'm just going to say that. And that band. And my old band. And what was your old band's name? Naked Beggars. That's right, the Naked Beggars, because you got a tattoo of it. <laughs> yeah. And yeah, I, I love that name. I don't have a Lola Montez tattoo yet, but... Oh, but okay. at the time, you guys weren't a band mm-hmm. anymore. But I remember. No, it's okay. It's all right. We but you found. But I remember. I just remember like, <laughs> oh, you band. know, like I knew she was. Yeah. She was married to Eric, and and I, and I remember that. And because Beverly was dropping all these things, I'm like, right, Eric, the kids, and she's talking, and she's from. I'm like, and I knew. I remember she had like, and I just barely remembered who who she was actually, who Beverly was actually talking about. Sure, was this woman from this band? I remember I saw a long time. I remember the, I, the only reason I remember that band because I thought, oh, she's really pretty, you know, mm-hmm. like this, you know. And well, it definitely s- wasn't because of Eric, you know. <laughs> it was because I was of like, you. Man, he's, he's, he, yeah, I mean, I, <laughs> he was so cute, right? He's <laughs> <laughs> like that band. God, that. I- I don't know how because that guy I Eric was cute. I'm it well, it's funny because I like completely forgot about like that. Yeah. Like for whatever day that was, you know. And I and all these years later, I'm like, oh my god, my brain is like recalling this memory that I like. I don't know how I remembered. I remember she had like a, like an interesting name, like Inga mm-hmm. or something like. I'm like, <laughs> might like I Inga. actually know <laughs> who know she's who talking about? Is? I think I might know. Yeah, that's awesome. This is bizarre. So yeah, for that is months, bizarre. you know, and then we met and stuff, and like she's really cool, and she had all these melodies, and I was like, just give me your melodies, I'll write songs around them, which I did. Which mm-hmm. then I was just like, okay, these are very interesting songs. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, but uh, now wait a minute. <laughs> but you know, eventually, you know, like it actually, I I thought it was cool because I mean, like. I'm definitely, I'm pretty, I don't know, I guess I'm traditional in some ways when it comes to bands. I just don't, I'm not super comfortable with the idea of a relationship within the band mm-hmm. like that. And oh, uh, yeah. so and I think a lot of people feel that way. Mm-hmm. And it's funny because nowadays you see it everywhere. Mm-hmm. And I think people always think of Fleetwood Mac, mm. but they don't factor in the fact that, you know, mm. there's so much drugs were involved and, and stuff. So and much drama. <laughs> you know, and it, it scares you, right? And you think like, oh, it's never going to, you know. Get, we're gonna, gonna I suppose get it's valid, but if that were drugs. true, <laughs> if that were true, it just wouldn't, it wouldn't, it wouldn't endure in all the, in the on all those cases where That's it does. True. So, so it's interesting. But for a long time, I was just, it actually, it, we began, I was like, I got this. This is cool. You know, like whatever, you know, like we're writing songs and we're doing the right thing for the band. This is good. And I totally don't like her like that. You know, like I think we're good, you know, like, right. And then actually it just, uh, it actually totally just uh, overwhelmed me. I I actually developed a huge crush on Inga, you know, where we were like writing together. I was like, it was actually really problematic to the point where I was like, I was almost going to tell her I was going to like, but then I was like, I can't tell her. It's going to totally ruin the vibe. It's going to ruin the band vibe. It's going to be stupid. I, like, oh, I kind of like you, you know, like, just shut up, stupid idiot. You know, like, you can't fucking do that. You can't just, you know, like, you can't do that. You absolutely can't do that. But I was just, oh, my God. You know, like, it's just like I have to, like, you know, because you're an artist. You're, you you kind of got to express right, right. something. And it's yep. just like, it was really you're troubling like, to you're me. like, maybe I'll start writing a song and then maybe she'll Are catch you? on. No. That would have been, <laughs> I don't know. Yeah, if that would have been not. maybe intelligent. <laughs> But you wouldn't even know. Even if I tried that, you wouldn't have even caught on. So, Inga, did you... Because I wouldn't have understood it. I was like, what do these lyrics mean? Did you... (laughs) It's one of his new songs. I'm like, what does this mean? So did you... Did you... you, stupid. (laughs) Did you start to have feelings at the same time? I think so. That's that's why you're picking up on all that... But I didn't. I didn't know, because I I wouldn't have assumed. Are you going to tell the story? I was just like... Or am I going to tell it? (laughs) The moment in time. (laughs) I was like, she doesn't like me, cause that's that's the whole thing. I'm like, I can't say anything to her. She doesn't. She, well, I had she, started dating she, somebody else for a short amount. Yeah, and I knew it was. I'm, I'm like, I'm like, there's. If I and thought that not- she might have even liked me, I might have reconsidered. But I'm like, there, there's like no chance, dude. I'm like, you just you need to fucking bottle this up right now <laughs> and get on with it, or else you're just gonna be in hell. So just don't even bother going in. So so go ahead, and I'll interject. <laughs> okay. You know? I love this. Okay. So we were somewhere, or no, we were, we, we were nowhere, as a matter of fact. I was, <laughs> I was you can't backtrack like this. No, we were at a party. You're talking about that at the party? No, see, no, no. Be, because of what I just said about being totally just like, she doesn't like me, this makes what she's about to say even more hilarious. Okay, yeah. But I now guess. I think All it's right. very funny. So I, I text him. No. Because I was no, ready. It, yes, I did. You're missing t- a whole part. We went to what? we went to our friend's party. She had a holiday party, 
And I, uh... No, no, this was... I had a park and stuff, and, like, you had to pick me up, and we went to the party, you know? No, this was... Before... No, was no, it? Was oh, was that? Oh, sorry. Yeah. It was after that. Well, we, we were seeing it. each other all the time. We were writing and doing. Yeah, yeah. No, no so big deal. Like so we went talking. To a, yeah, we went to this. We went to this party together and stuff. But not stuff about and, anything like. But just she was, you know, now, now in retrospect, she she makes fun of me because she's like, yeah, do you, you remember I was like, you know, and you were like, you know, taking photos of me and like we were, you were know, goofing For off. And like, yeah, I was like touching your knee with the, and I was just like, oh, I remember that. But you got to understand, like I was just like, apparently in my mind, I just was just like. Never even considered like she liked me at all, right. you know. So I was just like, so you any of those signs. Even after I kissed him, he just was like, yeah. no, no, I'm getting. <laughs> <laughs> no, he's like, no, that nothing, that nothing. That wasn't part of it. No, no, because <laughs> she was just doing all your typical things, which now we're like, yeah, very, very flirtatious. This you know, is just but how like, we are in the band. <laughs> but yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's just what bands do you know li- you know literally like every little thing is like going whoop like right over my head I'm just like but that's the way it is when you're on such a deep level when you're just convinced you just think like there's no like you yep. like me mm-hmm. okay, I'm fucking so I'm Blake to the you know? like, I'm getting to the I'm text like, I'm texting okay I'm texting I'm gonna text him was this the, the next not the I next day I, I don't know I, I don't know the timeline later. somewhere around there so I text him I was like hey what are you doing <laughs> I uh, I gotta ask you a question. He's like, okay. I was like, do you like me? <laughs> like oh, we're like in fifth grade, okay? Like, <laughs> like I passed him a note basically. But this is why everybody likes you because then, you're, you're the way you are. <laughs> like, this right. is amazing. And and he says, no. <laughs> I said. <laughs> I was like, I didn't say no. I didn't yeah, say no. You did. You said no. And I said no. All right, this is all right, the so difference between up, men and up. women. <laughs> I didn't say no. I said, well, yeah. In her mind, she's like, well, you said no. See, you you interpreted it as no. No, you remember it as me saying no because it's basically a diss because I was like, well, yeah, but you got to understand when I said, well, yeah, my brain had just exploded when you <laughs> said, do you like, because uh, I like you too. I think you beat me to it. And Aww. I just. I said that. And then you're like, oh. You were, you were like, can I ask you something? I, I, I thought anyone, you misunderstood me. When somebody prefaces uh-huh. something, when they say, can I ask you something like that? You know, it's like... You got scared. This is about to be really heavy. But I wasn't like that. <laughs> I actually, I might have had a premonition. Mm, and I was just like... See, picking up those... Those little spidey, sweet, though, because it's just... Yeah, tingles. it could be, but like also... So like I ruined the band, everything. man. So like... She's like... <laughs> yeah, that... No, I think I think I get I get what you're saying. If I if I can interject, even though I wasn't there, I think I get what you're saying. <laughs> is because it's one of those things where you're like, uh, is what she's really asking me real too? How is this going to impact our, our relationship in the band? Everything first. And if I is there a correct way to answer this or an incorrect way to well, answer? Well, I, sure. yeah. I had thought about that. That's mm-hmm. why I said, hold on. Yep. I. Well, I didn't know if he was like, no, 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 I don't like you because we're in a band. You know, he didn't yeah. say that part. But then I was no, like, I let me tell you, I like you. And then I waited. I'm like, I'm like waiting. I'm like, oh. the dots at the bottom. Now this like, is the real, the real answer is coming. And he's like, uh, he starts to type, then he stops typing. And then after that, I don't remember anything. Yeah, else. I actually says, don't remember anything. Says Blake typing, then no, yeah, then nothing, then Blake typing, <laughs> like the little messages. Oh no, no, you, yeah, you did ask me, and I was like, you, do you like me? I was like, yeah, actually, or something, which, which obviously is not what she wants to hear. You know, it's not, you know, dedicated enough, you know, but it's sure. like, oh, no, oh no, I know what he said. Uh, he I said, said, sure. 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 Yeah. Oh! Yeah. Okay. I may or may not have said, sure. <laughs> Sure. Sure. And then you said, <laughs> "I felt, I felt foolish, it's but I had to be honest." Oh, you know what I felt? But that's a safe answer. But, sure. But when you, but when you asked me that, you know what I felt? I was like, because I still was under the impression that she, because I didn't know she actually liked me yet. Right. When she asked me that, yo, I thought she, I had a premonition she actually might ask me that. But here's where I was coming from. It's like she found me out, and I was like. Fuck. No. I'm like, damn it. Like I she's tried calling you out. Yeah. Oh. I tried so hard oh. like to cover it up and just to be cool. And just be like, whatever, and not like a total, <laughs> like obvious dork. That's how I felt. Like she was calling me out and I thought it was kind of rude. Right. I felt sad I was I felt foolish. I felt like 
it's adorable. Yeah, and and you're like, oh, I like it you was too. Like and two now it's like, what? Later, how many feelings did you have with it? <laughs> <laughs> that was a cre- yeah. I did not. I didn't see it coming. Honestly. Okay. No, that. Now, see, was, all uh, of this makes sense. The whole sure thing. Dan, he <laughs> had to look back at that. He had to like <laughs> physically look you in the face. That was good. Because <laughs> <laughs> like, I'm thinking, yeah, I'm like. Mm-hmm. We're missing something here. Yeah, like seems a little like safe. There were That's so hilarious. many things we had in common. Neither of us wear deodorant. Um, <laughs> <laughs> That's the biggest one right there. So that means you're gonna be totally fine sitting next to each other. Yeah. No, I don't actually. He, I don't. Does, he never smells. Where we're not. It's just me. <laughs> <laughs> we're very much opposites, though. Just like everything. That's why when people like be like, "Oh, what's Inga thinking, Blake?" or "What's Blake thinking, Inga?" You know, it's like. We're not. We'll just fail at that game because we don't. We don't interpret the same things the same way. Like yeah. the same question. Like at least you could ask us like the same question like individually. Because like if it's if we have to answer for the other, it's weird. It's just it. It's like we're we, we're like we think differently. But you know, see, I can kind of tell that that's the case. But you, there seems to be like a huge mutual respect, which I think this is the reason why you won't end up like Fleetwood Mac for better or for worse. Um, hopefully for their kind of success, but not for all the drugs and drama and everything that went the, the four way. Everybody with wait what? Happened? Yeah, oh, right. Oh, I yeah, no, all yeah. Of their music, but I feel like you guys like listen to each other and then turning it back or bringing it back into the whole music mm-hmm. thing like it really shows especially with your new stuff like it's a lot of you and it's a lot of you you know what I mean yeah. <clears throat> and that's really cool so you guys have like a really nice balance there and hell you're still together you must like each other enough you're still making mm-hmm. music together yeah well like you said we res- we respect each other yeah. and you yeah. respect each other as like musicians as people and artists and we do make a good team I guess I yeah. mean I, it might be for our uh you know our differences but we definitely musically we definitely complement each other totally but also we're both uh we both well that's the one thing i think uh where we are when we're doing musical stuff mm-hmm. and not like you know washing dishes or something oh I mean, yeah it's, yeah it's yeah musically we are Me very compatible <laughs> it's a good team but... <laughs> we listen to each other yeah so like I'm trying to understand where he's coming from, what he wants, but when he wants me to develop something, he waits, and because I take longer. Yeah, not really, but is I'm, it like I'm a, on the spot? You are you, you mean know? with music? Then is it like yeah. that with music too? So like that's what I'm saying musically. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So, but you know, sometimes we do. Uh, well, I mean, he has. Uh, he's creating the music mm-hmm. now it's changed from what we when we first started so now he's creating it and he was like give me some throw something on this and i'm like what get i don't know what to well, do yeah i mean I, and then so like yeah. you know so we start with the new stuff i was like i don't know where he wants me to go but then when he was like you know kind of like he described something a little bit even though sometimes it wasn't exactly what he had in mind Sure, because it never is when it comes out of my mouth. But what, <laughs> um, just, but we came up with stuff that worked, I think, and and he ended up liking it. Yeah, I mean, it, it works because I know that what she naturally does works over like the new material and stuff. So I know well, she could be fulfilled was a transformation. artistically. But yeah, yeah, yeah. Because you can't really program a human being to do a thing that you want exactly, unless you want to domineer like that. But I don't, I don't think that's a really good move to make with bandmates that sure you know if you're actual bandmates you're supposed to be you know you know work work building the thing together so oh and he knows that i don't like to be yelled at while we're trying to record yeah i mean the the trying to yell at you people always fucking yelled at me oh i see what you mean because they get like like, they get amped up i don't know they just get more angry i would think (laughs) i'm like oh sorry that was only like another person in my life (laughs) <laughs> I'm like, don't yell at me! I'm so sensitive. We we're like, now we're. You're we like, now we're. <clears throat> you're like, now we got to talk about this. Okay, so mm-hmm. that actually pushed. That actually kind of. I kind of jumped ahead a little bit here, but this actually is really cool. So, the stuff that you were doing before with Lola Montez, yeah, and now it has changed. So, what's the 
how did that happen? Was really, it really natural? Um, well, actually, I mean, so we started with whatever. I'm not quite sure what we were doing, but you know how you got to come together and start writing or whatever. Um, but when we started writing the second album, he did approach it differently. And so he came up with some riffs and stuff, and then he would pr- produce them. Um, and not produce, produce, but like show us. Yeah. Um, and actually, he was fiddling around with where I would vocally fit in. So he would actually change, change. his tunings like okay. constantly yeah. um, until he found where it w- was suitable. And actually, it did work because I was yeah. like, well, that's. What the fuck? And how is that different? Why from, didn't like, that happen before? <laughs> I was gonna say. So how Not is that with us? But how's the different? Like with the first um, album that y'all did, um, what were the big, the two big differences? Was it, was that like okay, this is like our first time writing together. We're gonna kind of see what happens. Yeah. And that so you get it out of the way. Yeah. You start settling into like a groove and a pattern. Well, of, yeah, well, the way it actually happened was like when I, we first met. I took her melodies acapella yeah. and just. Uh, just demoed everything out on Pro Tools okay. and just built so, total, like, complete songs around it. And those were the songs that made up the first EP, and that's what we played. Um, some of those worked in rehearsals, and some of them didn't really feel the same. Yeah. And those got left behind and stuff. Um, eventually, we added more songs, um, but eventually, it just got really, it just was the, the the rehearsals just felt unnatural doing those songs so we started songwriting mm-hmm. just in the room together like is probably I would have riffs and mm-hmm. Kurt our drummer would we, we would just go back and forth and we would sculpt the song together and she would yeah. come up with her parts simultaneously or she would record and go in the other room and then I had to run s- the other room loop it okay. to come up with lyrics and melodies so yeah. we did that for a so long I could time hear myself. and that's yeah. how our second album <laughs> came to be it was okay. just much yeah. more organic like that those songs translated better to rehearsals and shows and that was good um and we played those songs a lot and then i got eventually sick of uh everyone's rock band and my own rock music and <laughs> and then and that's i eventually that's understandable because i like change as well and yeah. i mm-hmm. think it's we did a lot of well after pandemic and throughout we had a bunch of uh singles we released and they were kind of like you know they're all they're a random bunch of seven songs or six songs maybe it's it's a random bunch of them but then eventually i i knew i wanted something else and so um i started listening to a lot new band that that's one thing i always do is i I listen to a lot of new music or if it's not completely new it's if it's new to me um it interests me from like a production standpoint but also instrumental musical and 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 i was doing that during the previous album I was like just listening to so much new stuff and I was almost getting like you know a little worn out from doing it (laughs) you know it was like what else can you listen to and and so that's when I started to change my vocals at that point Mm -hmm. and I was like you know what I think I can do this well I can do different things with my voice anyway I've already you know I've always done that and I was just like yeah why why would I sing that way anyway that's kind of old and well, just and, and that's tiring what, for me anyway. That's, that's <laughs> the one thing I think that bands do well is that <clears throat> there's so many instances where we've talked about uh, recently, actually, that like, I don't know, it's it's not even a recent thing, but for like the longest time, like people seek out a sound, a band comes and has that sound, then everybody else tries to reproduce that sound mm-hmm. over and over and over and mm-hmm. over again. And it just, that being said, it just depletes itself. You know, you kind of deplete your fans. Mm -hmm. You, and it's just nothing new or fresh to share. And some of the best bands, like, yeah, they know that they're going to sell the same record. Like Nickelback, they'll sell the same shit every time, all the time. And people will (laughs) listen to it. But it's like some of my favorite artists sound different from one album to the next. And it's weird. It's weird being a fan sometimes and like, like I love Tool and they always have that sound that that's Tool but like their first to their second album is a huge jump to their third album to their fourth album mm-hmm. for me because I was just digging the last album so much last time yeah. you know and now it's just a different layer so I think you have to grow as oh, yeah. a musician no, it's natural for well, sure well it mm-hmm. makes sense because um, if you like the Pretenders or something when you listen to their first mm-hmm. stuff it's like 
what is going on yeah. and then like yeah mm-hmm. <laughs> i'm just kidding <laughs> um, but it is it is like that if you listen to like blondie too it's like totally that kind of stuff it's different it's like it's always going to be blondie i'm but reaching way back in time but you know what i'm saying um, we we hey we like blondie um so question to that uh mm-hmm. so some of your did you draw from any particular vocalist this time around or did you kind of did you think about it, it i don't ahead of time like were you, i mean you, there maybe well, shades of Billie eilish but that's yeah like that's it i just couldn't cool. i can't pinpoint anything but i do with one of the songs leave a message right leave a message um yeah there's, like, there's a few songs and it's just so innate yeah this jersey girl mm-hmm. it was is like yeah. the rapping we yeah rapping we did some like it's like kind of like what they call new gen you know mm-hmm. like sick brain and um Nova Twins, certain parts, you know, in addition to singing, that sort of, yeah, not quite, I guess you wouldn't call it rapping, but right, more spoken rapping, style, yeah, spoken. a little bit more casual sounding lead vocals, which uh, we never did before. And I had, I was like, man, there's a couple songs we have that would be great for that, yeah. you know? And um, yeah, so some and of that I was, was like, a joint well, why effort. Why didn't you tell me this is what you want? You mean yeah. sound, <laughs> you honestly, you sounded great with it. So is the, se- uh, so the Subversions EP, is that the uh-huh. newest one? Yes. Is that yeah. your third then? Yes. Yes. Okay. So beyond the singles, all the yeah. Those singles. No. So like, so I've listened to all of the five songs that you sent me. So the thing that I, I really enjoy it. I mean, one, I I really, I love EDM. I love electronic music. I love like hard, heavy stuff. Mm-hmm. And you have all of those elements. And your vocals, they do come from. I could see like a Billie Eilish thing. Uh, the first thing I thought of was Kidney Thieves, which is like a band that I was hmm. really loved. Got. I don't think they they made it past like maybe 2006, but they were around for a while, and they have. Uh, but it kind of threw back to that, but it was new and fresh, so it wasn't even mm. the same kind of sound. But it re- it was the closest thing I could think of. That I, love I, hear, that I love to hear. I love to hear when people say they sound. It sounds like such and such, and I'm like, what? Who but is that's that? what and I like about because like, you because <laughs> yeah. it doesn't matter, but it just fits, you know. Right. Mm. And your your tone and your voice is similar to at least for what you're doing this time around is similar um, to what you know what I remember for them. I mean, and, and I get that too. Like, I mean, when I was playing music in a band, people were like, "Oh, you sound like Grace Slick." I'm like. Yeah, or you sound like Paramore. You know, yeah, I was like, like yeah. I you was, guys sound like Paramore. Like, you know? not even going for that, but <laughs> yeah. whatever, you know, if, yeah. That's, yeah. if that's what uh, you hear sometimes, that's what you hear. Well, I want to take a quick second to um, to talk. Well, I want to talk more about this, but I think what we're going to do right now is we're going to get, we're going to level this part up of the show, okay? I uh-huh. know, we're just getting into it. I know you did a shot of vodka, but no, there's, right. there's more to come. Okay, so. Check it up. The next part of this podcast is, um, you know, I'm a bartender. You see me at work Um, (laughs) plenty of times. uh, I remember there was a picture of me behind the bar. And because of our similarities, people were commenting on it. And they're like, why, Inga, why are you behind the bar? She's like, that's not me. It's Lisa. And I I saw it and I thought it was me. Yeah, exactly. (laughs) Like, like my hair was up. What am I doing? And I was like, (laughs) you're like, I'm not working there. But okay, so I've been on this side mm-hmm. of the bar. Um, y'all have never bartended before, right? Yeah. No. Okay. Have you? Have you are you trying yeah, to remember? I did. I did. You did? Okay. I went, I went to bartending school in Manhattan. <laughs> the things you learn. Okay. Yes. So um, that was a waste of my three hundred dollars. <laughs> really do the crap after that with it all right anyway go ahead well <laughs> i don't, I don't want to break it to you but you didn't need to do that but that's okay well you that did was a, fun a very thing. long time ago you did a you did a fun thing um okay i'm gonna teach you guys how to make a drink and we're then, all gonna make a drink and one of y'all i mean i think i probably have enough tools for everybody to make a drink except for dan but <laughs> i don't want to make a drink right? he doesn't want to make a drink but um, this could be something fun and I'm not going to teach you I'm not going to teach you how to make anything fancy or crazy or out of control but something that you could like have you know to enjoy around the okay. house gardening gardening <laughs> making music you know? <laughs> any of those things okay I'm going to get the tools and we'll be right back okay okay, okay. alright we are back I'm so excited okay so Inga what we're going to do is I'm going to make a drink for me, Blake, and Dan, 
and you're gonna make your own drinks. So you don't have to worry about making three drinks at once because that's just crazy. Okay, so I'll walk you through this and uh, in between, I'm just gonna ask you a couple of questions, okay? All right. So your newest EP called Subversions, um, can you tell people where that's available? No, on all streaming platforms. Nice. <laughs> and uh, yeah. And your and your website is, we're gonna list everything down at the bottom, but if you could just give us a quick yeah, overview. Yeah, so the, we do have a website, um, lolamontezmetal.com. And I love uh, that. Yep, and <laughs> most of our uh, handles are, well, it, it changes, but um, we are on Instagram. <laughs> um, lolamontez.subvert on Instagram. That's Ooh. cool. Yep, Lola Montez Band uh, on Facebook. I just kept it that way just because I forget why. I don't know. There's just, I guess, a good <laughs> reason at some point to just keep it that way. <laughs> Even though people would call us Lola Montez Band, it's not Lola Montez Band. It's Lola Montez. Yep, right. Um, just for people to know. Now, um, what is your favorite song off this album? Um... Uh, uh, I like uh, the game, mm -hmm. of course. Um, it's, it's perfect. Yeah, it's a good blending so, of everything. Just, I just love listening to it. Um, but uh, on, on my, yeah, me too. I would say the the game. Just, you know. Simulator yeah. is all, and the leave messages. Uh, those are my top. Well. You know, it's like ah. <laughs> all of them. <laughs> it's like, pull, Today, right now, me what's so your favorite? Like, right <laughs> now, right this Asriel's uh, cool. It's um, that's actually about someone dying. So and oh, shit. and uh, get really deep on this one. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, but it's actually about Asriel is the <laughs> angel of of death. So, I, I, but there's different takes on it. So I knew that was in my Bible studying somewhere. In yeah. The back. Am I supposed to be doing that? Okay. Then, so yeah, in between this, so I want you to take mm -hmm. these leaves, okay. pick them off that stem, uh -huh. and put them in that yes glass. No, you're good. You can yeah. You are wonderful. Look at that. Look at you, you pro. Yeah. Okay. Now we're gonna take some minty strawberries. We're gonna grab three per glass. Okay. Mm -hmm. yeah, that's four. Okay. okay, now this next part we're gonna have to share. We're gonna have to share this muddler because apparently I only have one muddler, so you're gonna muddle first. Okay, what is that mean. Okay, I'm gonna model first. Okay, <laughs> I forgot. Okay, so muddling, we're just gonna take this and gently just kind of smash everything, sure. just enough to get like the fruits, the juices, the oils from the mint out, and this is gonna be really nice when we mix everything else in this cocktail. All right. Mm-hmm. You know, I just forgot. I forgot my cocktail spoon, but that's okay because I have something else that's gonna work just as good. Okay, so just like your that, face, my, <laughs> my, <laughs> very metal. Your face. <laughs> so Asriel. Yes. Is uh, the, the, the god. Oh, no, sorry. Of oh, the uh, sorry, not Ange our d angel of death. Oh, okay. But it's supposed to. The other take on on Asriel is that it helps the people that helps um, hold the hand of people that die. Or maybe it's the whole oh, I like, don't even like, know. <laughs> like brings them to like the afterlife? It does take them there, yes. Okay. But helps the uh, people suffering around. Oh, the person I see. Okay, well that's, so I like that, that a lot. Take on it anyway. No, that's great, that's cool. Mm -hmm. Okay, so for this part, we're gonna, have you ever seen one of these before? Yeah. No, I've okay. not. What's Perfect. It? Okay, so this is just, this is a jigger. Um, this is measures two ounces. This measures an ounce. Um, we are going to fill this up to the top, and that is going to be two ounces. So most cocktails yeah. are usually going to have two to two and a half ounces full of booze. Okay. And then you're going to pour that in there. Like a pro, that bartending school. <laughs> oh, you can go a little higher. We didn't have that. You, you didn't have it? Did you? Okay, maybe I just got a heavy hand. Oh, there was another one. I guess I didn't need to steal 
Oh, that's yeah. okay. And then you're Plain still. We're good. You're gonna take your lemons. We're gonna put a little bit of citrus. Just squeeze it. Just one would be fine. I guess if you want to do two, you can. It depends on how citrusy you want it. So what we're kind of making right now is a take on a mojito. Yeah. It's like a strawberry mojito. But instead of putting limes, which is like a typical, like I put lemon in it right. because we're using vanilla vodka and this goes very nicely with vanilla vodka. So that being said, really sharp stick with skull. Okay. Yeah. All right. We're just going to stir this up a little bit. This is where I was saying I forgot my bar spool That's okay. spoon. So this is what we got. And then we oh, are actually put the lemon directly in. I just put it in there, but you don't have to. You don't have to by any means. Actually, for all intents and purposes, let's just take it out. Let's just take it out, put it off to the side. My hands are clean. I double wash them. <laughs> I got everything. Okay, now we're gonna take some ice and we're gonna put it in there. I also wash my hands. <laughs> <laughs> so these glasses are massive, so you don't. You can fill it up just as much as you want to. So that Patron glass, it's it's big. It's freaking huge. Okay. Okay. So help yourself to some ice. Then we're gonna take this soda water and we're gonna fill her up. Cool. There we oh, go. Oh, I'm excited. Yes. Nice. So it's gonna be a little boozy. But it's gonna be nice. And then I think we might have enough. That's yeah, oh, very yeah. Yeah, a little stabby. Stabby stab. Oh, stabby stab. Here you go, Blake. Thank you. You're welcome. Ooh, beautiful. Mm hmm. Here you go, babe. Oh, I think we're supposed to. Cheers. Yeah, cheers. Thank you guys cheers. so much for coming on the show. Thank you. Thank Yay. you. I, I cheers. cheers. <laughs> All right. Oh, yeah. Mm. Yeah, it's a great recipe. Yeah, this is good. Is that um, original? Well, mm. I kind of picked out a little yes and no. I kind of saw like a strawberry mojito done, um, but then I was like, trying to figure out what will go really good with vanilla vodka and I was like I don't really want to put lime juice in it I've never wanted to put lime juice in vanilla vodka unless I'm making something like a key lime drink or something so I kind of was just like you know what we'll do a variation of it give it a go yep. so yeah it's just yeah. a little modified Ooh. version a little modified yeah. version and it's warm. easy you know <laughs> it's e and that's I think the best part about it is that it's easy so what you can do from there is just if you're at home or whatever and like you're in the garden, you're hanging out. <laughs> you're just like, you know what? We got some mint, we got some strawberries, we got some vanilla vodka, soda we water do is have easy. Those things. Yeah, just put it in there. It's all we good. Got lemon balm, that'll, that'll work too. Mm. That sounds well. great. And you know what? I kind of, I thought about making a strawberry simple, which is like where you make like a, a simple, which is half water, half sugar. And then you put the strawberries in it, you wait until they get like mushy, and then you strain them out. Oh, yeah. And then it's pink, which I thought about doing that here, but I wanted to see all the fun stuff in it. Yeah. So yeah. I chose to keep it clear. Yeah. But yeah. that would be really tasty too. Thank I'm you. kind of dig of this. Kind yeah, of, it's cool. A very refreshing summery cocktail. Mm -hmm. So, all right. So this being said, so you can, you have all the, the socials. So you have all the socials. We're gonna list them all down at the bottom for people to do it. Um, now, for them to check out your music and everything. Now you have quite a big following so far. Um, and have you played any shows recently? No uh, shows no, recently. No, not okay. yet. I mean, it's been so coming hard up. with like, coming up after like the pandemic, Like I still feel like There's just are... a lot uh, of things that we were kind of reworking, but yeah. Um, yeah, we, we, with that and focused on yes there was definitely we uh yeah every there's been sort of a, a process for everything you know once mm -hmm. we found you know once the mixes were done you know they had to get distributed mm -hmm. once the dis distribution was locked in place then we had to promote you know and when they get yeah when when they're released it's just it's uh 
it's game on you know there's no time to waste but you know so when will they be released oh they're already released they've okay. they released in march so okay so since march uh it's just been uh promoting the ep has been actually more important than than rehearsing yeah so rehearsing uh, the, uh logist- logistically for us lately it's been um uh, a little bit more complex sure. uh, getting everyone's schedules uh, online together um, uh, so we're just we're still working through that now um, but uh, yeah so the next phase is some music videos mm-hmm. as well as uh, a live set you know well that's going to be so it's cool it's kind of prepping we're actually talking about doing some pretty cool more theatrical kind of thing for a yeah. live show. Okay. So that's going to take some time to kind of, well, it may not take too long, but put that together. Mm-hmm. While probably we might be influenced by our, our um, video making for that yeah. live, live show. Actually. I, I think that like a, mm-hmm. if, if I could say like your videos from what I've heard of mm-hmm. everything so far, like they're probably going to be pretty badass they should yeah put the other videos gonna, to shame <laughs> we're really gonna use so much so that we're, we'll probably take them there. off the internet because we'd be ashamed <laughs> of taking, i get that not like, taking anything off. every time you want to do something you outdo it and yeah. then you're like oh i can't look at that anymore I don't well yeah. you don't want to but the, the story it's a story and we're telling it and you just don't rip part of the story out of the book oh yeah. you like you don't rip the middle out i like that yeah, I mean, this is a band. Even, we probably would have ripped even the first now, page or could, a couple pages out. But <laughs> oh, yeah, you could look at everything we've put out and see all sorts of evolution and mm-hmm. just yeah. change. Well, so. I, I, I like I'll, it. I like to see the, the changes. and Yeah, yeah I, love, I love that about you because I feel like you're not... Like, Inga, you love and appreciate art so much and you've always been like, go with the flow. And I feel like that's really important because... Well, I think that's, it's really hard for a lot of musicians, you know, because everybody, we all have that little bit of perfectionism, some, a lot of us side, and then we don't even get started doing that, you know, and I feel like that that's a good way to keep it in your mind, but I feel like that's a rare thing. Not a lot of people have that because you always want to put on your best face and not everybody's. Your best face is also your worst face. Yeah. I, I mean, it's not just your best face. I'm saying it's like, yeah, it's your face. <laughs> it's just your face. Have another sip. <laughs> it's, all, it's all about it's your like, face. <laughs> it's your face. It's not just your good side. It's just like, it's like the Batman right. character, you know, the Tommy Lee Jones played or mm-hmm. Tommy Jones or Two Face. Mm-hmm. It's, it's like the one and then the other. It's the yin and the yang. You know, no, no, another thing, Inga, I always wanted, I always <laughs> notice about you is that I felt like you had that, um, that X factor as like an artist, I th- always thought you were that fearless person that ne- that always took the chances, mm-hmm. you know. And I think a lot of people are they I have feel like those. I haven't taken enough chances. I don't know. I, I think you kind of have mm-hmm. that thing in you where you you you'll go on that high wire, you know, mm-hmm. and you'll take the chances. And I think that's rock and roll. And yeah, I think that's really is. cool, you know. And, and a lot and that's the missing thing that a lot of people are after, and they just maybe don't have it in, in them. But I feel like that you do, and it's it's a free thing. Like mm. Tom Waits has that type mm-hmm. of thing. Like the Angela Moore from Fishbone. Like those guys. Yeah. You well, know those bands. So I just wanted to say that that I really admire you for that. You know. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. And I, I feel like people get in their heads a lot, where it's like they get tripped up. That's what on, it is. Yeah, they get in their heads, and it's not their fault. It's just we all do. It just happens. We you all. Know? Do. We all do. It's about like, just like kind of recognizing like I'm in my head right now. Maybe I'm a little too much in my head. You know. And uh, just kind of taking, because at least you're doing it. Because there's so many people that don't even get there or don't even get to that point, you know. And yeah. then there's people that can't even look at the stuff that they've done before that. But I, I get it, because, like, when I came to Nashville, I totally ripped away all my songs. I was like, and bye. Yeah. <laughs> oh, I'm, I'm super embarrassed about some of my lyrics from, like, God knows when. But I was like. Yeah. I took and them I all down. And I did throw them out. I was like, yeah. I don't need to look at those. <laughs> I know. I was like, I don't need to be reminded like, of that. I'll start over with new ones somewhere. I didn't even know it. Dan does that all the time yeah. with his music. He's always just like, oh, God, what? I can't believe I did that. I was like, that sounded great at the time. He's like, oh, I'm so much so much better now. I'm so much better now. I awful. know so yeah. much about it. I'm like, we're our harshest critics. Yeah. But then it's like, if we keep doing That's, that, no one's ever going to hear our shit. 
Well, you got to let a few of those come out. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> but the ones that you know are just like, what was I thinking? I mean, people only they remember you for the they last thing you did anyways, you know, mm-hmm. that whole thing. So it's like, if you if you think of it from that perspective, it's just like, huh, I guess you can't lose. You just keep putting stuff out. Yeah. You know, it's not like somebody, if somebody really digs that far back into your archives, then yeah. they probably just like you anyway yeah. you are, you know? <laughs> What keeps you, well, I should ask, like, what's your favorite thing about original music? Just like your own original music or like, is it like the message you guys get to send or is it a release of like your artistic side? I would definitely say it's first and foremost for me, it's the artistic expression, but it's also the worst thing about it because like if (laughs) if it is your music and it doesn't, Sometimes it's just it's I'm surprised how out of alignment I feel with my own music sometimes if it's just not right or I'm over it yeah. or something like it actually it's harder sometimes. Mm. But there's definitely other people's music that I that it's just much harder for me to play as well and just mm-hmm. feel like I'm expressing myself. Mm-hmm. Um but sometimes it's not and it's easier and I don't know if that's because I approach that as if oh it's a, I'm covering someone else's song no big deal I could kind of lose myself a little easier but if it's my song and I happen to be you know playing you know the thing that made some of our music challenging on our second album that we did a lot of touring on was the fact that I was playing a six string guitar tuned sort of like a seven string and using a capo um, on some pretty high frets which if you know anything about you know what that does to a guitar like all those things just mess with the intonation <laughs> and I would break strings and and so logistically for me that was actually a big challenge too mm-hmm. um, uh, even though I did enjoy that me- playing that music um, there are some challenges but you know it's your choice sometimes it's just it, it's always your choice to, to, to I mean you wrote the song you know um, sometimes it would be bittersweet for me to be perfectly honest about some of this, the music on our second album and and all the 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 road you know stuff we did for that, um, it was bittersweet because it was a cool opportunity, but it was really hard for me mm. as the guitar player to keep all that stuff running smoothly because some sometimes like I would just like my main guitar would just like I'd bust the low string you know on the second song and it's like that's that. <laughs> string is my whole lifeline to all the the money riffs you know and it's like oh great you know like how do we just like keep the positivity going and it's hard you know Mm -hmm. so it's it's it actually was a it caused me a lot of distress you know even though it's the greatest thing in the world you know to play your own song so it's uh i guess it was just in reality, it, it was kind of a bittersweet mm-hmm. thing. Part of the reason for the music the way it is on this new album, on this new EP, is that it completely eliminates those previous technicalities where there is no. <laughs> it's probably the whole reason he did it. Mm-hmm. <laughs> it's like, oh, it's one of them. It was it's definitely clear. part of it. It's making it know? easier for me. That's awesome. Yep. Yeah. So if I had to play well, it live, it, I wouldn't have those same peculiar, those particular and peculiar challenges guitar yeah. wise that I had previously that made performing those songs uh <laughs> kind of difficult and challenging and unpredictable. Oh, I got you. Mm. I feel like that was a very eloquent, thought out answer. Thank you. I really enjoyed that. <laughs> <laughs> now you want to hear my answer? Yeah. Not as well. <laughs> yes, I do. Not thought out at all. <laughs> I would love to hear mm. your answer. What's your favorite part about playing your own music? Well, it's um Okay, so it's writing the music. That's, um, well, recording's actually the hardest part for me. Mm-hmm. Writing is uh, actually a little bit easier, but it's also a little bit, tor- it torments me a little bit too. Mm-hmm. But playing live, I really don't like doing covers mm-hmm. as much as covering my own music just because I know it and I have the freedom to do whatever the hell I want to. Mm-hmm. And so, and, and, becoming a character that i've developed for the band it's yeah. like theater for me i like so that. i love live shows more than anything else i like that. and if i fuck it up fuck up the song yeah i don't give a shit right. 
<laughs> it's very punk plus, rock. Plus, oh, mm-hmm. and I love punk rock. Mm-hmm. Um, but I learned that I've seen other artists fuck up their shit. Mm-hmm. And when they don't give a shit, that makes me feel good. Yeah. And it makes me feel like, oh, I could do that too. Right. And, and they don't care. I mean, they're... You know, I, if they're really fucking up all the time, that's another thing. But right. no, I'm just saying once in a while. I wrote the like book fucking. on fucking up <laughs> on stage. And I've actually, no. I've been able to, I've been able to pull some, some pretty good recoveries. <laughs> but, you know, you can't hit it out of the park every time. And uh, you do the best you can. You do. Mm-hmm. Mm. Well, I think it makes it, you make, it makes you feel a little bit like it's okay. Yeah. You know what I mean? You're like, they're human. Uh, something happened, you know, whatever. Mm-hmm. But like you said, if it's happening all the time, but yeah, I, I, we appreciate that. I don't know. We're just all people and we, we're just all about sharing like our emotions for that. And I think that's something that is missed out severely. Like I'm not trying to knock people that play in cover bands, especially if they're making money or if they're doing it for a living or a tribute band or anything like that. You know, if they're, if it has something to do with making money or if they just want to do that for fun, you know, but I think that for a lot of people, for a lot of musicians, um, it's not enough. You know, it's always, I think the goal is to try to create your own work, Yeah, you know, and it's the hardest thing you can do. It's, it's the hardest thing is and to, I mean, I don't know where you guys get your inspiration from. Um, you know, if, if it's everything or if it's stuff, that's very personal to you. Like, I almost wonder how people can write something that's so like not personal to them. Like, you know, um, me too. Pe- people do it all the time and it sounds great. And I'm like, good for you guys. So there's yeah. a level of like, that they're just making art and it is about them cause it's coming from them. But at the same time, it's different. So I find yeah, that that's, fascinating. Well, that's why I couldn't really get on with that songwriter mm-hmm. culture in Nashville. I think mm-hmm. a lot of it's kind of sort of, um, uh, yeah. self-righteous and just mm-hmm. a little bit like oh I know how to write a hit kind of thing whatever and it's just like but you're writing for like commerce purely and well the just, interest is different the 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 whole reason is different you know yeah, yeah it's a, really, it's a different yeah. you know kind of it's like oh okay you know so, and that changes things mm-hmm. yeah a lot mm-hmm. so I get that though you know someone else said that too that just came on this show recently that they just didn't vibe with the whole like songwriter culture it just didn't work for them yeah you know like sitting down and like trying to write a hit to write a hit or like let's have a co-write yeah it's just like well we've never written a song together before we might not be so compatible and Mm -hmm. we're writing just to cash in on something like Mm -hmm. it's all right we have a bunch of fundamental problems getting in the way of just artistic creation right now so Mm -hmm. (laughs) you know it's like to me that's just like I don't know. It's it's not a very natural or just um, it's not it doesn't it doesn't feel like a friendly or a safe environment to just kind of let your you know your your true you know artistic self kind of create in those yeah. situations. So I, yeah. I think that's true. I, I mean, I could definitely see that. What do you think, Inga? I don't know. I'd like to make some money writing a fucking song. <laughs> 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 are you kidding me like I get that too like but I, I feel like there's people that write for years and years and years well, and could, years but it's like I, I'm just not nothing into happens. it as, I'm just not in, mm-hmm. into it that much mm-hmm. you know I just I think I think but there's a difference between like oh you know we're gonna pitch this to so and so as manager and they're just gonna be great this is gonna be all over the radio versus knowing your fan base or what interests you musically like for me subversions well, i had an interest in a particular subgenre and well, just intrinsically i loved it. it if you're writing a song usually you're writing it for someone else hmm. i don't well, I, write, I just want to play I write my songs myself. For, i, I write songs wanna, for me yeah. like yeah, what's the what ultimate saying, yeah. version of this type of music that i could write for me mm-hmm. but knowing that music is a social experience for me and it's i it i have to do more than just you know do it for myself it involves a reciprocal cycle involving other people yeah so okay so mm-hmm. well who's somebody who might like this music as well and what would they care about and thinking along those lines i think there's a bit of a difference between that and say oh let's write a song together and yeah. then i'm i know a guy is going to pitch it to Kenny Chesney's, you know, manager, and just then we're all gonna be like, let's, together. you know, yeah. Well, people do that all the time and stuff like that, but it's just like, 
I don't know what. So we're gonna pool our resources together so we could make money when some big country artist records it or whatever. And it's just I don't know. I don't know. There's a sort of a vibe there that's I don't know. Mm-hmm. Cold. You know what? It's a bummer. Me, it's cold and evil. You know what's <laughs> another thing is I always wanted to say uh, just about writing songs and trying to be a songwriter. I think the important thing is is connecting with something. You know, it's like all the heroes that I can think about growing up and the, the people that I admire, I connect with the artist that wrote those songs for yeah. them. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. When I listen to James Taylor, I'm uh-huh. listening to the guy's heart and soul. Absolutely. I'm not listening to him write for somebody else mm-hmm. or, or Fleetwood Mac or the Beatles. They're writing what came out from them or Tom Waits. You know who they are yeah. through their music mm-hmm. instead of trying to write up you know, a hit song, which is right. great and you know, it takes a lot of talent and all that. But that's what I'm after. That's what I really admire in people who try yeah. to write music, you know, that type of thing. So mm-hmm. yeah. I think I was agreeing with you, Blake, about that stuff. Yeah. So. Yeah, I think that that's important. And I think <clears throat> some people may not, some people look at it, it just depends on how you see music. And I feel like, I don't, I, I'd like to say that nothing is wrong with it, but I feel like, again, it's one of those things for a lot of, musicians like it's not enough and i think i think writing songs can be really difficult and really challenging and i think that not everybody's comfortable with that so this is the next the closest thing that you could get to that you know and i think that there's something to be said for pushing yourself to that limits and opening yourself up Mm -hmm. to something that you know you experience you know it's it's about an experience i mean I'm sure that when the Beatles wrote everything, they weren't just like, oh man, this is going to be an amazing hit. You know, they just, <laughs> I they the did like, like and wrote I it. I mean, you yeah. watched that Beatles, uh, what was that documentary? Well, after a while, I think once they started realizing what was coming out of them, I think they felt that way. But like, I don't know if anybody sits down and really is like, whatever I put to paper or to guitar is going to be magic. You know, like I think people can hope that's the case. Um, yeah. They're trying. Yeah. I, I mean, yeah, I mean, I think we've all heard people hype up their own music yeah. a lot. Um and, you know, I That's my know, point. It's like, yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's like totally sorry. Apparently I uh Uh-oh. No, no, nothing except apparently that I <laughs> I've turned off everything but I forgot to turn off my iPad. So I apologize oh. if you hear some little dingings. Okay. But okay, so the next uh part I want to ask is cuz I have a few more questions for you sure. guys and I appreciate all the time that you've dedicated to this. <laughs> He's like, "Yes." Um okay, no, so Ida. <laughs> I have to redeem myself. <laughs> no. So um so like so some of your influences that have changed over time and uh did any was it was it like an outside influence that kind of well influenced you or or was it just we were listening to like i know you guys said you were listening to new music and whatever and is that something you gravitated to and if that's the case um is there any artist that you can think of that influenced you recently or or like older artists yeah well you've heard for the first time maybe yeah, I for me it's 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 just new newer and newest, you know, mm-hmm. like all the time. So like by the time I was writing the EP um and like writing more songs because the previous songs weren't quite what I wanted, mm-hmm. um I was definitely already listening to that stuff and referencing it quite a bit. Yeah. And uh what's interesting was that when we were sort of like touring our uh second album in 2019 um i can't remember how this all happened because like in retrospect you just like oh i you just start doing stuff for some reason yeah. but i remember um checking out a lot of jason richardson stuff if you know that is he's a guitar player he's kind of a modern day shredder dude okay um plays in a couple metal bands but um for some reason i was kind of just um into it for some yeah. reason even though i wasn't doing that and it's just sort of old hat to me but i was like um the particular flavor of it and the modernism of it all um was kind of was kind of new to me um and from there um i started screaming and that was a big part of it too um cuz uh singing was one of the hardest things i've ever had to do in my life mm-hmm. um you're not a natural singer, you think? 
Definitely not. I think even speech wise, I mean, I'd probably have to talk to a speech pathologist to sort out my singing issues, you mm. know, or something else because it's just, it's just innately just something that, um, could, I could never get what I wanted out of it for all the work that I put into it. So, um, with screaming, it was definitely different. Um, and there was, you know, a period where I had to kind of go through some some hurdles and kind of learn that. Yeah, I should, but, should get a little sample right now. But oh uh, <laughs> it's going to take a bit more of the mojito. But, um, yeah, it, it, but the confidence and stuff like that, you know, that was pretty good. Thank you. Thank you. Um, so. Uh, it's actually really low and yeah, deep. Yeah, well, it, well, it has a lot to do with singing because mm-hmm. it's like what He's babies really loud, do. Though. Babies just fill up their lungs and they push down on their diaphragm and they just go ah, and they just you know? wail at you exactly. <laughs> and that's what great singing is, you know, doing physically mm-hmm. with the body and singing, uh, screaming properly is the same thing. Um, but having the competence or having the uh, proficiency, mm-hmm. which I never had with singing, um, was really encouraging. Mm-hmm. And as I listen to more bands in metalcore and gent i uh also became interested in the mixing of it and the production of it which i already had been with other things but that just it just all in this sort of like triple angle way just put everything into like uh just hyperspeed you know and i just um knew i had to make more music um in this vein and that's that's how it happened and uh that's cool yeah, there's a lot of others. Uh, a, a band called Era, E R R A, mm-hmm. that I got a lot of um, inspiration from. Um, my vocals, sort of, uh, vocals are a little bit more deathcore than than metalcore, um, but they, they they definitely have a home in this style of music too. Um, the EP is primarily metalcore, which is basically metal with a halftime feel and big choruses with clean singing Mm -hmm. you know that's basically what the core part is Mm -hmm. you know roughly because the etymology of all these subgenres is stupid (laughs) doesn't (laughs) make sense at all right but um if you don't know what this stuff is that's basically what it is in a nutshell so um and and yeah so it's it's very haunting yeah, there's you know, some I mean, of these songs are very haunting. There's ambience, mm-hmm. you know, that's a big part of it. Yep. Um, there's some cinematic vignettes and stuff like that. That was important as well. Um, futuristic dystopian cyberpunk bullshit. It, it you hit know? all it's of just, my spidey senses when I listened to it. I was like, ah, oh, because it's like I, I'm uh, yes. Yo, know, I listen to everything you were just talking about. Yes. The futuristic dystopian. Yeah. Yep. Yep. So it was a, uh, yeah. So all of those. Uh, all of the words, all the little trigger words were just hitting yeah. off my spidey senses. Mm, oh, yeah. So I was really, really digging it. And I was like, God, I was like, this is so freaking cool. So, so Inga, is there any, did you have any influences this time around with the EP? I think we Well, t- <laughs> can I, <laughs> it might ruin the songs for you. <laughs> nah, just tell me it's okay. So when I, get, there was a part of the, couple of the songs where I was like, I cannot, I can't find anything but then i started singing something and i was like can i just throw some sort of like harmony on this and so you'll listen to i don't even know which which part of which songs they are <laughs> but i mean do you remember from uh gosh what is that movie i hey, I, yes, I am ease if you please so that yeah whole thing Lady Lady the tramp? Tramp. is that's right. that's right that's right that's right so great, that's great in movie. these songs. If you listen to it. <laughs> like the cinema. harmonies you're saying? <laughs> yeah, like yeah, what yeah. The, like it's... Um, so that's songs, what made you think of it. In New it Dread just, and the pre-choruses. It's just my style of coming through with the, with, the, with the harmonies. Yeah. But I just, I was like, you were, I was, go, this is all I can come up with. But I <laughs> started laughing. I'm like, I don't know. Do I like it or do I not like it? I'm not sure, but we... I like yeah. it. Well, I like it, but... It I, was very odd, and I'm like, if this is... That like, was your memory is, of like going back to like what it reminded I, you of. I would listen back, and I'm like, well, that sounds like that. A I'm lot like, of what we do is play... Is like uh, my producing of her vocals is more from like play different characters because mm-hmm. she's like a... She could do all sorts of different voices, so sometimes yeah, like do cool. this character, do that character, and she kind of does that. She has that voiceover part of what she does so that's the best way that i think i'm able to com- communicate with her as a 
producer, you know. That's interesting. That's more than like anything melodically, you know. Yeah. No, I mean that's kind of cool though because you are a character. Like you said, <laughs> you like being like theatrical, you know, like especially for live shows, which so do you see your guys' um do you see y'all having like a live show in the next year cuz you were playing a lot of live shows. Yes. Yeah. Yes. We're within the next year there should be a whole new set. Yeah. Because uh, you were playing all those shows before COVID, right? Yeah. 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 COVID just really fucked a lot, a lot of things up. Yep. Yeah, and you know what? It's uh, we would have been definitely doing a lot more, at, but I guess life is full of changes, right? Mm-hmm. So yeah. I mean, if you would have told me it's going to be four years till you play another show, I'd be like, "What? Mm-hmm. I know, right?" Four years. Well, and I mean, but like, it's huh? such a different Has world it? now Jeez. with like COVID. So I mean, after COVID, like. I just everything is so much more on everything's available online so your live streams yes, you know you're like yeah. your tiktoks like your socials people yeah. watch that all the time like it, it's not the same feeling of playing a live well, show we're, not, i think but, a lot of people are totally back at but watching that's where the hype shows. starts yeah, because i mean yeah, you're it, right because in the end you know people on human beings on stage i mean yeah. It, it really hasn't changed in you know 50 60 years you know mm-hmm. i mean it's the same thing some of the lights and the technology does but humans yeah. but pe- it's the humans that people really pay to see but the hype is just like things like youtube and, and uh, socials the, the, the and video well, the video format is really just the the lifeblood that makes the internet have appeal in the first place you know mm-hmm. it's like why be on the other? why be on social media Right. Have you been on social media? And there's a lot of there's a lot of stuff on there. Yeah. Whatever you're into, you can find it. Even That's stuff true. you've never find. Like you could discover stuff to get into. There's so many bands. I mean, I mean, realistically, it's impossible to discover them all, you know? Yeah. Or to stumble yeah. on them all. Yeah, that's true. But you you can get really close to I mean intentionally finding new artists that you'd be into just you have as to a seek fan. them out and yeah. if you like if you seek them out you'll find you'll have For a better sure. chance you know and there's so much good quality uh, mm-hmm. content now too with like like especially mu- music videos are definitely getting very cinematic now and uh, just the bar is just getting raised for all yeah. that stuff. So it's like that's yeah. I mean like yeah. I mean at the end of the day, yeah, people on stage. That's one thing, and that right. kind of doesn't really ever change. But like the hype where people get really excited nowadays. I mean that's just that's how bands really pull ahead. You know, it's it's more than playing their local scene. It's like what they did on YouTube. <laughs> yeah, it it reaches so many more people that you know if they don't live in your town, but like that's how people connected for a long time during the pandemic. And it's still, yeah. once people I think open that door, I don't think people are gonna close that door because it does exactly what you're talking about, you know? So it's a good tool for everybody. And then once you get people out live, that's a whole other level of experience. Yeah. Mm-hmm. That's where like your real one and one experience is like, you know, where, your tangible is if yeah. we if we have gained any fans over the last couple of years mm-hmm. uh, by putting out this music or whatever uh, we want to meet yeah the people absolutely that have have oh, watched totally. us and, and been <laughs> like hey we love this we love that music we can't stop listening to stuff like that it was yeah just, want to meet those people absolutely that's connect. where you, where you want to have the the physical connection mm-hmm. and mm-hmm. you know that experience that well, you I don't know, know how you, much physical you want me to connect with <laughs> You're just gonna dive right out on stage. You're just gonna dive right, right. right into everybody and you know yes. swim into the pit. But it yeah. is, isn't it? You know, like yeah. you're in the same place. You know, because if we were, you know, if we were electronically trying to transmit that energy, it wouldn't be the same. Yeah, it's not the same. It's it's just a it's a different sensory thing. You know, Correct. it's the full right. body. Right. But um, <laughs> we talk about that all the time. We're like. How do people like find new music out there unless they're actively searching for it? Because there's so much shit that just gets shoved in your face all the time of like I know. Mm-hmm. not even any, anything. Like I'm like dog, cat, animal videos will forever always be funny until the end of time and adorable. And mm. uh, and it takes up a large majority of my free time <laughs> scrolling. <laughs> but I'm like, but there's other things. But sometimes I wish that there was like, a better set of algorithm to be like 
because there's no one else like nothing is getting you know it, it's the music industry is so different but like nothing is getting marketed to me in a sense of like this is what you like Here and even you if go, it is you know? it's like probably the last thing on your mind you're like oh yeah. like like because it's funny because i like i do i am interested in new bands and new acts that come out or new djs who are doing something new or kind of innovative like that always interests me but like anytime i get served an ad of like some band i've never heard of i'm just like get rid of this you know right. it's like i you know so there there is sort of a mm -hmm. uh uh, a bullshit you gotta and I don't mean the bands are bullshit but there's just levels of layers of you know internet is, bullshit you gotta go uh, through I know this because I run ads and I get served ads mm -hmm. and when s I get served an ad that says hey new music check it out and it's just the regular stock you know thing mm -hmm. even if the algorithm kind of is understanding where I'm coming from and kind of figures out my musical taste yeah cause it, it kind of does okay because I follow these pages or whatever, so I get served an ad for a new band I've never heard of that's kind of like that. Okay, right, yeah, don't care, though. Mm -hmm. You know Which platform, though? And it's because uh, Instagram, Facebook, and it's it's because the bands aren't really doing anything particularly special. If, like, <laughs> I, I have a lot of music that's, you know, yeah, out now, and you could listen to, but you're probably going to need something else to really, you know, get you there. Well... And you bring up a good point with the whole like internet thing and well with exactly with the algorithms that you're talking about and this is a question that I always like to touch on with people and we already have been talking about it is like things that were different before and different now but you're so true because I'll get the same ads and I'm like oh I kind of like that band but do I just like that song or whatever and it's like is there anything cool or interesting or is it just like parts of a song that I like you know are they doing anything else that's going to captivate me or are they just is it just like a one trick pony yeah I think it actually goes beyond the music because the songs can be great mm -hmm. the production is great the video is great if they've got video with it I mean all that stuff the ad copy is great you know mm -hmm. but I think it's like feeling that the, they're part of this world or that they have a world that they created this world that that they're in and mm -hmm. you kind of want to be in their world because it's just you know grass is greener you mm -hmm. know so um if an artist can kind of create that sense that um they've built a world that uh looks really interesting you know as opposed to oh we made a video <laughs> we're a band we're a metalcore band we made I a video you. and the music's yep. out now and check it out <laughs> it's on spotify right. you know like who gives a shit you know yeah. like but like but to feel like they're and this is where like that artist authenticity thing becomes very interesting and it really hasn't changed since you know modern music has been you know since since you know <laughs> since 1945 it really hasn't changed it's mm -hmm. just like well what you know what makes Elvis so appealing or you know what makes you know even nowadays looking back it's, it's just like you know what makes the Beatles or the Stones or uh, you know what made Jerry Lee Lewis or you know like and it, but it's it, it, it really uh, nowadays it's we've, we've seen so many evolutions and iterations of music and all these different genres and subgenres um, a lot's been done but not everything, and it's impossible because it's infinite. So really, it just mm -hmm. comes down to how, I guess for lack of a better word, unique the artist is in terms of what it appears that they're about. And if perception is reality, then if, it, if you could perceive that an artist is this thing that, you, that almost seems like it's sometimes larger in life than than many times i think those artists do become larger than life as a result of their perception um but that factor is so intangible um it can i think it can be i think a lot of people attempt to try to explain it um but you can't it goes beyond music it goes beyond image um because we've seen many artists try to cop those things mm -hmm. and copy music and production tactics and even ad copy music video styling um, image um, it doesn't necessarily mean that there's going to be a greater connection between yeah. strangers on the internet and that artist um, so that the, the, the playing field to me still remains level because with even all the advances in technology and music marketing um, the thing that we find compelling about our favorite artists is really 
the only thing in the end that really is going to get us to, you know, f- you know, discover more or dig in more, you know, for a new artist, you know, at least. I think I, I get exactly what you're saying. And I was thinking about this earlier today that I was listening to Octane on Sirius and I've been a huge Corey Taylor fan since I was like, I don't know, 20 years old. So I've been listening to Stone Sour and Slipknot for 20 years. And I was thinking about it and I was like, cause he's now apart from those two bands has another band called CM Corey motherfucking Taylor. Yeah. But it's just, right. <laughs> yeah. And I'm like, what is the obsession that the metal scene has with Corey Taylor? And I was thinking about this and I'm like, you know, I really don't know what it is, but whatever it is, is the same thing that I noticed very early yes. on that just drag me into just loving everything that he did and i was like it's like his voice but it's his attitude it's Mm -hmm. the way he talks with people it was just something that i was like i still don't know what it is i'm like but people just love him and like he just keeps getting bigger and bigger and bigger and (laughs) and i went to see slipknot this past year and I don't think that they're particularly old, but he's been performing that one song, Wait to Bleed, for 26 years, and he says he hates it because he's been doing it for so long, but he does it for everybody. And as he's talking to the fans, who are much younger than me, he's like, I, he's like I've been doing this longer than you've been alive, longer than you were a seed in your dad's fucking testicles or something like that. He said it, and it was just like, Ugh, that's mm. also hilarious and they're just laughing their asses off yeah. and I'm like he's not particularly old he's not even 50 but I was like it's so accurate and they're just going crazy everybody's just going fucking crazy and I'm like I just don't understand like you you think that most bands they get a half life of a half life of a half life of 25 years you know what I mean and then it's like I don't know there's just some people it's just like it just pulls them in more you know yeah it's strange i even have his autobiography you know what i mean <laughs> like it's a, there's some bands that i well, don't think would just exist wanted, if it weren't for you one watch, particular member yeah you know that's true i think you that's watch a good point. it because you want to see what happens next you yeah. watch because you want to get really you want to see what's inside this person that because yeah. that authenticity is so real and so raw and, and i remember before he had a band called cm what is it Corey motherfucking Taylor. (laughs) CMFT. Like, we would call him that 10 years ago. Like, Corey motherfucking Taylor. Like, you know, it was just, Mm -hmm. just sounded like it went together well. So I'm sure that we're not the only people that did that. They probably called himself that. So, (laughs) yeah, it's true. He probably wouldn't have made an album called that if he didn't think. Yeah. It his fans wouldn't understand and yeah. think it was cool you exactly. know because he's the last person who would be I like oh yeah I'm so great funny. you know yeah he probably thought it was funny sure. yeah yeah and he's a big uh, what's that guy that um from Black Flag Henry Rollins he's a big Henry Rollins fan yeah I could see that yeah I could kind of see that talk too. about authenticity <laughs> mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. yeah so well okay so what's next on the docket for you guys well, like you said, we were going to make some videos. Yeah, um, S- storyboarding really and, uh, and uh, that's going to be incredibly exciting. Do you make your own videos? Yeah, we have um, a whole variety of them, and we will continue to do so um, in in a way that uh, <laughs> we hope reflects the yeah. the uh, the vibe of the EP. Um, so that should be interesting to see what what those look like because yeah. we. Uh, we're pretty ambitious people, so <laughs> of course. Uh, and uh, there's a lot to live up to. Um, self-producing music videos for that EP, so no kidding. Well, thank you guys so much for coming on here. Thank you for dedicating your time, taking time out of your schedule to come hang out with Dan and me, <laughs> even though he didn't talk very much. He's this episode. He's, he's busy ones, drinking his cocktail and. Pressing the buttons and smiling with his Stevie Wonder glasses. <laughs> <laughs> it was a good time. It was, it a, good was time. a good time. The only thing Love that went wrong, you guys. The only thing that went wrong was the mic fell 
fell apart like three times. Other than that, we were fine. And we got to round this up because we got 58 <laughs> seconds left of memory on this card. Or okay, oh, no. all right. Well, we're going to go. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you guys so much thank for being you. here. And we need to hang out again soon. It was a pleasure. We'll put your socials on. So cheers, guys. Cheers. Cheers. Cheers to you. Yes. We'll see you later. Yeah. Hey guys, you've just watched another episode of Nashville on the Rocks. And if you've liked what you've seen, please hit the subscribe button. Thanks. We'll see you next time. <laughs>